When we hear the word dyslexia, what comes to mind? Reading what's not on the paper? Mispronouncing words? Well, that's true, because dyslexia is a disability which involves difficulty in learning to read or interpret words, letters, or symbols. We have students with this disability in our education system, and they are being supported by the Ministry of Education, Youth, and Information. Let me welcome Acting Assistant Chief Education Officer in the Special Education Unit in the Ministry, Mrs. Ann Newman, who will share with us the Ministry's approach to helping these students. Welcome. Thank you, Carrie. All right, so many persons have the perception that persons or students with dyslexia are dunce. Please clear that up for us. Well, we never, in educational circles, we don't use the word dunce. We right. should try not to, because persons who have specific learning disabilities are persons who are of average or above average intelligence. Mm. That means they have the capacity to learn, problem solve, and do whatever they want to do mm -hmm. in terms of a profession. Mm -hmm but they have a processing disorder. Oh. And dyslexia speaks to a processing disorder that affects their ability with, to interact with written print and word, spoken, the spoken word. Okay, so how can we actually help these students? Okay, the first step in special ed is always diagnosis. Mm. So once students are not doing well in the learning of reading, then they ought to be referred for an assessment. And once the assessment is done, it will show what the child's strengths and weaknesses are. We do remediation by using their strengths to teach them, as well as remediating their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So the assessment report will usually give recommendations and strategies that would best suit that child. Okay, so what's their learning style like? Okay. There is no one size fit all. Mm, as is Everybody has their own learning style. Mm -hmm. Some of us tend to be auditory learners, some visual, some kinesthetic. So we recommend that in a mixed class, teachers use a variety or a combination of those strategies. Now, when you have dyslexia, very often you're not a very good visual read, um, learner, but you may be a good auditory learner. Wow, okay. So, what we would do to compensate for that is we would have other persons read for them mm -hmm. or use programs. These days with the technology, there are lots of apps that can be downloaded, some of them free of cost, that help to read for students. Or is there a policy that guides schools as to how to treat these students um, and, and other special needs, for example, students? Yes, um, our policy, our special education policy is still in the draft stage. Mm -hmm. At this moment, the education system transformation project is visiting regions and doing sensitizations with stakeholders before it is sent to cabinet. So it's in an advanced stage, but we have guidelines that inform what we do in the system. and. We, our teachers are exposed to this guideline, these guidelines. One of the things that we do for a person who may be dyslexic is once they have been diagnosed officially, mm -hmm. that person can qualify for what we call accommodation, extra time, sometimes a reader, in our national examinations. And schools that do the national exams know this and they apply to the student assessment unit for this accommodation. And we also, from the special education unit, and we also have special needs coordinators out in the main schools, facilitate workshops, right. staff development for teachers who need this sort of support. We're always available. Okay. And Carrie, it may be useful for, to, for us to share a few tips with you for parents or teachers who Please. are dealing with students who have dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Dyslexia, three of the manifestations of dyslexia are usually reversals, substitutions. And reversal, I mean that they reverse words right. or letters. They so substitute. P, P, B, or B, D, sort of like that, seeing B as D and exactly, so on. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Or saw for was. Okay. Those Wonderful. sort of examples. Oh. So they have reversals or they substitute some words. When they can't fully pronounce it, they put in a word that has a similar configuration. Oh, wow. Or 
they just are just very disfluent mm -hmm. in reading. And for them, it becomes a very frustrating exercise right. to learn to read. So a lot of students who are dyslexic become very frustrated with this process, this critical process. So some of the tips that we use with teachers, we say to teachers in a classroom, if you realize that you have a struggling reader in your class, never put them on the spot. Never ask them to read aloud in front of others because it's just going to heighten the anxiety. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is do more peer reading okay. with that student. So if you have a good reader, and especially if they're friends, and you notice that I'm putting it in quotation <laughs> because you don't want always to have friends mm -hmm. together. But if you have a good reader in your class, you can assign that person to help read for that child so they're not always heard audibly. And then you can play a lot of games because remember, the person is of average or above average intelligence. So if you converse with them, you would never detect mm. that they have a learning difficulty. So do more things, use their strengths, so their auditory skills, conversing with them, and having them access information through tapes and that sort of thing is very helpful for a child who may be having a learning disability. And of course, we're in the technology age, using the technology as I earlier suggested. Oh, those apps and so on that yes, you mentioned. Yes, the apps, yes. Okay, yes, yes. thank you so much. Important tips for us to use. And when I say us, I mean parents, teachers, friends. Thank you again, Mrs. Newman. You're most welcome. It was my pleasure. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>